One of the areas where SDXL still has a advantage over Flux is when attempting to combine more than one LoRa is prompting two characters from two different LoRa's into the same image. When attempting to do this with Flux, more often than not, you'll end up with a merge of the two LoRa's, both of the characters looking like they're the same person, or just generally one LoRa or fine tune overpowering the other. SDXL, on the other hand, is able to successfully chain up multiple or at least two LoRa's where you're able to prompt the two characters separately and have them appear in the same image to varying degrees of success. So today I want to go through my favorite approach and tool that I use to generate two characters in the same image using Flux. To achieve that, we're going to be using Scenario, who are actually the sponsors of today's video. Now, before you guys click away, please keep in mind that I only work with sponsors that I think are gonna bring value back to you guys. I get a lot of requests for sponsors and I really look through the requests and find tools that I think really do provide value or are interesting. So please stay tuned. Even if you're not gonna use Scenario, you might still learn something today in how you use Flux. Now, at the end of the day, the reason I do love Scenario over doing this in Comfy UI or other tools is because Scenario has all of the tools in one place to continue to fine tune and refine the image to get the design result. And you could theoretically do everything. We're going to cover this video today for free, but in my personal experience, I think it just takes up a lot more work and it's a lot less efficient, which is why I keep insisting in using this tool. So to jump into scenario, go ahead and go to the link down below. It is a referral link. So if you do use it, it helps me out massively. Go ahead and sign in or sign up and that will take you to this dashboard page. Now for today's video, we are going to need to have a couple of models pre-made. In this case, if we jump over here into models, I've got two models that I've already created. One is this Caroline model and one is this Carmen model. However, if you don't have a model and you want to follow along in the video, you can go ahead and use any of the scenario platform models that are made with Flux. And we'll be doing more or less the same thing here. You can grab something like the red haired superheroine, Juno, or any of the other phenomenal pre-made models that they've got here. Once you've found a couple of models that you like, we're gonna go over here to models and click new. And what we're gonna do is click on compose models. And what this allows us to do is essentially blend two models together or make two models interact with each other in the final output. Give your new model a name. I like to give it the name of the combinations of the model. So in this case, since we're using our own models, we're gonna use Caroline and Carmen. So we're gonna go ahead and add Caroline to Carmen to and call this Caroline Carmen. Okay, we're gonna set the base model as flux and leave the model components as is and save the composition or test it if you wanna test it out beforehand. Once we've saved the model, we can go ahead and use it and click generate. And that will set up a image generation session for us right here. Now, make sure that you click on model components and you keep this open. The approach I'm gonna show you here is very much hit or miss. While Scenario facilitates the approach to putting two characters in the same image using Flux, we are still using Flux and thus are still hindered by the limitations provided by the base model. However, the team at Scenario have found a prompting approach that can set you up for the best results, not only for the base image, but also for any adjustment that we're gonna follow through with. So the first most important thing is if you're using your own models, you need to have a good idea of how you've captioned the models, in particular, what token you've used to refer to the characters. In this case, I have set up the captioning for the Caroline model as Caroline and Asian woman. And then what we're going to do is describe what the first character is doing. In this case, sitting table. Then we will put here some kind of a descriptor of what she's doing in relation to the other character. So we'll put is sitting next to. And then down here, we will describe Carmen. Carmen, a woman on ice cream. And we're just going to go in and add a few more details just so that we can better distinguish each character. So we're going to give Caroline some specific articles of clothing. Let's give her Caroline, an Asian woman wearing a green blazer and Carmen, a woman wearing a black dress. So you can see these are, this is a pretty long prompt. There's a lot of descriptive details on here. However, that shouldn't hamper Flux too much as it is quite good at dealing with lengthy prompts. And we're going to go ahead and click generate. Now I have made one quick mistake here, and that is I've left the dimensions at 1024 by 1024. Now, because we've got two characters in the scene, I feel like a square image could be very limiting for the model and might either end up cramping the characters or putting them one in front of the other where we can't see their faces. So I am going to make one small tweak over here and change it to a 16 by nine and go ahead and generate a new batch of images. However, let's have a quick look at the first batch that's come out. 
just to see what we're working with. And as I suspected, we've got the Caroline character over here, but the person that she's sitting next to is turning away from us. So it's not very obvious what the other person's face looks like. But overall, it's a pretty cool image, to be honest. I quite like it. So again, this is one of the challenges when putting two characters in a square image because the space is so tight, it's just a little bit weird. Yeah, see, so in, in all four of them, they're not too bad, but there is definitely a bit of weirdness happening here. So we're gonna try and wait for the 16 by nine images, which we are starting to see over here. Great. So we've got one over here. Now you'll notice that neither of the characters looks like the characters from the model. As I said before, one of the issues with Flux when using two Lauras or two fine tunes is you'll end up with a blend of both of the characters or both of the Laura's faces, and both of the characters will look very, very similar. Now, I have noticed that if the two Lauras are very different, let's say that one character is a human superhero and the other one is like a mecha, you are more likely to get the prompt adherence and not have them bleed over too much. But when dealing with people, I find that this is generally the case, even if you have two separate genders. And this is where I'm gonna show you where the power of scenario comes in. They did also not quite get the prompt. I did say the Caroline with the green blazer was gonna be sitting on the right and the black dress on the left, but whatever, you know, they're both there. There's an extra cup of coffee there, which I guess is believable. Let's say that she ordered one, but the faces are not quite right. So how do we fix that? Well, I like this image. I'm gonna run with it. And we're gonna go over here and click on edit details. And that's gonna bring us into the scenario editor. And this is where things start to get really fun. So the first step we need to do is we need to actually place our character's faces in the correct place. So we're gonna go ahead and open up model components and we're gonna drive the Carmen model all the way to the bottom and the Caroline model all the way to the right. Now we did say that Caroline was gonna be the one wearing the green blazer. So we're gonna just follow that and make this character over here, Caroline. Then we're gonna head over here to draw a mask. Let's lower that slightly. And we're gonna mask out this character's face. Okay, we've got a preview down here of what the mask area looks like. And then we are just going to cut out everything not pertaining to Caroline and then go ahead and generate. And boom, we now have four variants of a face that we can use and all of them look just like my Caroline character. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab this one. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one because I do like that it's maintained the little hair fringe over here. And then we're gonna drop back in the Carmen prompt and cut out everything relating to Carmen. Head over here to delete the mask and switch over Caroline to Carmen and then go ahead and just repaint this character's face. Now, this is also really easy because both characters do have very similar or the same hair color. I'm gonna do two instances of this. Um, and again, what's really cool about Scenario is like Photoshop, everything is created in layers. So we're gonna create one layer where we just do the face and I'm gonna do another one where I actually grab all the hair just to make sure that we really get the right character in. And depending on how aggressively you wanna go, I'll even show you guys, we'll just select the whole damn character, right? We'll grab the entire character. I don't know when doing such a big in-painting area what the results will be like, but Let's find out. And there we go. I mean, the rest of the images haven't even loaded, but just with the first result, that looks exactly like my Carmen character, right? And again, we've got here a few different variants that we can pick from. I'm very happy with that one. So we're just going to grab it and then go ahead and delete the mask. And we've got her right here. But like I said, we're going to try and go a little bit more aggressively and do the entire hair area this time. So we're going to hide that layer, grab this one over here, and let's go ahead and remask it so that we can take a much more aggressive aggressive approach on this. And then I'll do it one more time with the entire character. Okay, grab a little bit of the arms and stuff. So if the hair wants to fall over here, it can. And as Mario would say, let's -a go. And once again, there you go. I'm not even gonna wait for the last two images to generate just with the first two. We can see a significant difference in the hair, even though their hairstyles and colors are very similar. There is a difference in the texture and the hues which is definitely reflected when I select the entire hair here. We've got another one and I'm gonna go ahead and grab that one, right? And there we have it. And let's just show you guys what it looks like. So that was when we just did the face. That is with the hair and you can see that there is a subtle but noticeable difference. So now let's go ahead and grab it again and we're gonna do the entire body. 
Okay, there we go. I've selected the entire person all the way into the hands. I don't know if you guys noticed that earlier, there were some issues with the hands over there. So I'll be curious to know if it fixes it. To be very quite frank, I have absolutely no idea what the final result is going to be like, but I think these experiments are very helpful in understanding what are the limitations of what a tool or a platform can do. So let's go ahead and generate that. Now, I left the prompt as is as well. I don't know if that's going to cause any issues. If we don't get a quality image, I will do one more attempt tweaking the prompt, removing the fact that she's on the left because, you know, she's on the right, which may confuse the model, and then we'll take it from there. And there we go. Uh, I think it did a pretty phenomenal job. I was a little bit worried because the first image was a little bit weird. There's definitely some strangeness going on here in the forehead, and she looks a little bit too thin, which made me think that I needed to leave more area for in-painting. But if we look at the other images, it's almost as if it realized what happened with the first image and then it adapted. But these all look absolutely great. This is my favorite. They just made the character smaller. It's perfectly plausible that she could be shorter. The hands are still not something I think are amazing, but unless you're looking really closely, you won't see anything wrong with that. Whether someone would actually hold their ice cream like that is a different story, but you know, I think this fourth image captures it really well. And one of the really cool things that I like about Scenario is again, we can grab the two instances that we like, in this case, these two, let's get rid of the mask, and we can actually erase away the parts that we don't like. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one, duplicate the layer so we don't lose it, and then and erase out over here now, I don't know how well that's gonna work yet because you know there'll be some blending issues with the background image, but you get my drift, right? You can kind of erase the parts that you don't like, which actually that looks almost perfectly fine, right? And then blend the two or merge the two layers that you're trying to combine and then just do a little bit more of fine tuning with the in painting to fix up the areas. And Bob's your uncle. However, we are going to keep the original one, which did move slightly. And before I show you the final step in the workflow, I will mention as well that when you are generating the characters' faces and the bodies and so on, not only can you tweak the model components here, but you can tweak the influence of the image into the prompt. So if you want the underlying image to have a little bit more impact and, for example, keep the pose, the style and so on, you can increase it, but then you'll get less of the model's repainting coming through or vice versa. If you find that you're still not getting the character coming through, go ahead and reduce the influence. Once you've got an image that you're happy with, the final step that I like to do is export it over to the gallery and then head over to images gallery. You can see here my previous attempts in preparation for this video. Go ahead and select that. Go ahead and grab the new image and click on enhance. And we're gonna use scenarios, amazing upscaler and enhancer to bring a little bit extra detail and fine tuneness to the video. If you wanna know more about their enhancer, you can check out this video. It's also down in the description below. And if you wanna learn more about AI image enhancing in general, and how some of the different techniques are, I've got a link for that down below as well. So we've got the input image here. Now, I like to initially just work with a scaling factor of one, which means we're not making the image any bigger, but we are trying to enhance it by bringing in additional details. The reason for that is when you scale up the image, the inference time takes longer. And once I find a formulation that I like, then I'll go for the upscale. So here with 1x, we're gonna leave it as precise. And basically what this means is how much creativity are we giving the model? For photorealistic images, I like to leave it as precise as balance and creative can introduce more design elements or creative elements that maybe we don't want there. We're gonna paste in the prompt. I did lose the Carmen one. Everything in settings is coming from this preset, so we're gonna leave it as is. And typically you wanna try either the standard or photorealistic version. I find the photorealistic one brings a little too much artifacting, so we're gonna leave it at standard. And there you go, incredibly quickly, we have a enhanced image. And if we look at the before and after, right? The after is over here on the right, let's zoom in slightly. You can see it reduced a little bit of that kind of AI perfectness that you get. The skin's a little bit less shiny. It's not amazing, but it is definitely an upgrade from the image we had before. Caroline, on the other hand, we did get a bit of a downgrade. The teeth are a little bit jagged, but overall I am somewhat happy with the image and we're gonna try and upscale it to 2X. And a lot of the times I find that fixes a lot of the disfigurements that we've been having when doing it at 1X. So let's go ahead and bring it up to 2x, which means that we'll be getting a 2K image. So even when we zoom in, there should be a lot more crispness over there. 
Okay, here we have the 2x version. Let's have a quick look. And already immediately just by zooming in, I can definitely see that the image looks crisper and sharper. Yeah, you see here the before and after. And over here on the right, like I said, bringing it up to 2x automatically fixes a lot of the teeth issues. Now, if you're not happy with this, you can still mess around with the settings, tweak the prompt, add in some negative prompts and try and see what works best. If you wanna dive deeper into the scenario enhancer, like I said, check out the other video. And that's my favorite way to get two characters into the same image using Flux in a relatively efficient manner. I hope you guys found the video helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you are interested in using scenario, please use the link down below. In fact, I even have a discount code down below for the first 30 users who sign up to Scenario. So please make sure you go and check it out. And if you really want to support the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon. Your support helps me make these videos possible, helps pay for the tools and whatnot that we use on this channel. And you can get ad-free versions of the videos, exclusive workflows, as well as all sorts of other goodies. Finally, if you have any questions, please come by the Discord. We'll do our best to help you out. We have a growing community of people there that are happy to answer questions share what you're working on, and create an environment where we can all learn AI together. Thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.